So uh, my name is Roger from Cormelt, and we have a uh, plugin for color grading in Final Cut Pro called Chromatic. It actually came out about six weeks ago, but I have a new version here with some, some new features, which um, this version will be released in a couple of weeks' time and will be a free upgrade for people who already have Chromatic, or if you buy it like now or next week or whatever, you get the upgrade for free, of course. So um, I'll run through the basics quickly. Uh, and then go on to what's new in this version. So let's start with, what are we going to use here? This one will do. So, I mean, there's obviously other uh, color grading solutions for Final Cut Pro. What is different about Chromatic is that we have integrated mask tracking. So with one layer, you have the overall grade inside the mask and outside the mask with just a single plugin. And that's using the same tracking as in our other SliceX TrackX products, which is that we've licensed for Mocha Tracker. Um, and you don't need to have SliceX, you just get Chromatic and it includes the tracking built in. So here's this shot of a, uh, of a girl sitting at the desk and we can see the, the movement we've got. So what I'm gonna do is show you an overall grade and then show you masking it so that we're protecting the skin tone and not uh, making it go to Horrible. So I'm just going to drag in my uh, grade there and open our floating window. So this has got all the controls. And you can see we've got a list of tools here. Uh, lift up gamma gain, color wheels. And you can add as many of these adjustments as you want to the uh, clip you're on. And it is not going to get any slower because all these adjustments are collapsed into a single correction and applied in one pass. So in this case, um, well, one new feature I'll mention now because I've got it here is that we now support the tangent ripple in this version. So I can go ahead and I can put this there so you can actually see it being used. So I'm going to put the, uh, the blacks towards blue. I'm going to lower them down a little bit to make a bit more contrast. Raise the highs a bit, adjust the mid-tones, uh, put the mid-tones a little bit purple, and the highlights a little bit gold. And maybe I'm going to go more extreme just for the purposes of this demo, make it more obvious. And as you can see, that's also kind of made her, her skin a bit of a horrible purple cast. So what we can do then is say, OK, I want to turn on the mask over here. and. I just make sure I'm on the first frame of a clip, which I am. And uh, let's just draw a little quick shape. And when I hit track forward, that's going to track almost in real time. And this is on a MacBook Pro, so not a particularly super fast system. So just let that go. So all the same tools, if you've used the other tracking products, um, there's the same tools for you can keyframe as well as track. Um, we do have a whole bunch of tutorials on our website. So uh, ones that are specific for chromatic in explaining the tracking and also the different user interfaces. Uh, now that I've done that, however, this grade is still affecting the whole image because it's on the overall, right? So actually what I want need to do is uh, copy it, put it onto outside shape and just paste, mm -hmm. and then turn off for one on overall, right? So now I've got the skin tone protected. Go to ins inside shape. Okay, and add the RGB. Okay. And I want to do a bit like this, and then I can play with the skin, and you see that's only affecting inside the mask. And I can play back in this case without having to render. Let's just uh, close this, click on something else, and play back the when it's just going to get to this one in a second. So that's playing back without having to render it just on a laptop as well. Generally, it's pretty fast for rendering uh, when you're exporting. And so let me give you a quick run through of some of the other tools. So let's go to another shot here. This is a nice one for this. So we've got some nice tropical fruits. And let's go to 
one of the later frames. Actually, let me just zoom in a little bit here on the timeline. Okay, that's better. So um, let me add chromatic again to this shot. Now, so there is a workflow I'll show you later where if you're grading the whole timeline, you don't have to actually add it to every shot like this. There's a quicker way of setting it up, which I'll show you in a bit. <laughs> So in this case, uh, what we want to do is show you the HL HSL curve, sorry. And you can see we've got, this is hue versus hue. So if I change a particular hue, it will shift it to another hue. You've also got hue versus saturation, et cetera. So in this case, I want to show you the hue shifting. And this is something that's unique to chromatic as well, is that I can just click on the image here, and that will add a point to the hue curve. But I can just drag up and down and you'll see I'm just hue shifting that particular shade. And I can change the, um, the granularity of that if I add some extra points to limit the effect, like here and here, then you'll see that that's really only affecting, um, oh, there we go, just that particular shade on there and not touching the rest of the image. Now, I could also do the same thing. Uh, let me just switch that off and go to the saturation versus hue. So I can do the same thing and just click and drag down to decrease. OK, so then that's just doing the desaturation just of that hue as well. So you can get really subtle with these. We've got saturation versus luma as well. So for example, I could say uh, desaturate all the dark areas, uh, so on. You can do some interesting things playing with the curves here, do some interesting shapes, and then just change where the midpoint is. So, and of course, you can stack as many of these as I wanted to. I could put multiple HSL curves, multiple RGB curves, no problem at all. Um, we've also got the Look Browser. So, actually, we've got a special at the moment. Oh, I didn't bring the flyers in, but they're, they're outside. Um, so, we've got five collections of cube files of LUTs that we've created already. And normally, that would be $50 extra. So, at the moment, we've got $99 for Chromatic, including the bonus. Uh, cube files with a coupon that's on the, on the flyer outside. So when you'll see that when I'm in the, the Look Browser, I can see uh, all the cube files, Look files on the current frame. And if you've got other cube files from other collections you've purchased or you make them yourself in whatever software, you can also make your own collections and manage them this way as well. So that's also included as part of Chromatic. So, I'm going to show you now the, um, the replace color, which is very handy for skin tones, and then show you some of the other new features in this, in this uh, beta version. So let's go down to, OK, where is my businessman gone? Here he is. I'm going to add the grade to here, open it up. And what I can do is use my color replace, which is selective color keying. And then all I have to do is drag along his skin here. And you'll see that that's adding some points to the color, color wheel at the bottom, which is indicating what we've selected. We can look at the mask and see the mask for this color correction. And then I can drag up and down here with the uh, brightness and darkness. Or I can just hue shift that selection into whatever range I want. So in this case, I'd say, OK, I want a little bit more red, but a little bit less saturated. Oops, like that. And then a little bit darker. And then I can just toggle that on and off. And you can see I haven't had to do any masking. I've really quickly been able to isolate skin tones there. OK. And so also, uh, I presume most of you do jobs shot in log a lot of the time. Yeah? OK. So let's go back to uh, another clip on the timeline here. We've got some black magic footage. Oop, come on. Catch up to me. OK. So uh, if I just put on to our log grade plugin, then in the camera LUTs, we've got all the popular uh, log to lin well, it's already included there for Sony, Blackmagic, Panasonic, etc. In this case, I want BMC's film to Rec. 709 version 2. And that's instantly done that. So the workflow is, if you, wanted, if you had a whole timeline like this, you would first of all select the plugin, sorry, select the clip, put this on, 
choose for camera, and then before you do anything, you would then um, copy and paste attributes to the other clips on your timeline. And then once you've done that, let me just quickly do exactly that to a, uh, a bunch of clips here. So I'll say edit and paste attributes and put just chromatic onto those. Right, so now what you can do is, because they've all got chromatic on them, I can, uh, let's say I'll do a quick grade on this one where I just do a, let me ties and just make it look awful. Come on, there you go. And so if I go to the next clip using the up and down arrow, right, it changes and the panel stays open, but it changes to the settings for that clip. So once you've applied the plugin to all the clips, you can just basically go next shot, change it to the panel, next shot, change it to the panel, and so on. And this is shown in the tutorials as well on our website, so you can see how to do this uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, we do also have saving of presets. So if you've got like a base look you've made for an interior or so on, uh, I can then say, okay, actually this has got nothing on it, but let me quickly do another horrible grade. There you go, bang, bang, bang. So then I can say, save this as, as a stack. So this would save all the effects I've got on the left there and give it a name, you know, call it Green Horrible. <laughs> and then if I open my browser, you can see the saved stacks um, with the current frame as well. So you would basically just go through your timeline, double click to apply the one you've already made and then tweak it as you needed to. So again, saving you a lot of time. Um, the other new thing, let's just reset this to something sensible. The other thing we can do is we can uh, store images. So let's say I'm going to store this in buffer A and then go to another clip, which has got chromatic, and store this, uh, no, this one here, store this in buffer B, go to another clip, so then what I can do is I can compare saved clip A to the results. And if I scrub through this here, hang on, you'll see that's updating the saved one, but the other one is stored. Ah, oh, that's looking a bit weird. I need to look into that. Okay. Um, or saved clip B to the results. Okay, it's becoming a bit of a keying issue by the looks of it. Uh, or you can see all three of them side by side. This is a beta, so there's something weird about the image buffers. We'll fix that before the release. That's fine. Um, or you can wipe between your different saved frames and the current result. So let's just turn that off. And the last new feature in this version is that you can take all the adjustments here and export a cube file to other software as well. Okay. I mean, I'll be outside at the back, so I'm quite happy to answer questions privately um, if you've got anything else. And like I said, I'll, I'll get some flyers. So if anyone wants uh, the flyers with the discount coupons, make sure you grab one because actually that coupon is not on the website. You need the, the flyer to get the discount. But uh, yeah, unless anyone has any other questions, then I'm happy to, to wrap it up. No one? Okay, thank you. That's our chromatic color grading.